Hey everybody, welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. Today we're going to talk about leadership, and good leadership equals unity. If any of you all been watching any of the documentary on Derek Jeter, it's I would advise you to watch it because it shows that he was a leader on his team. They even made him the captain of his team while he was there. But there's a lot more that goes with leadership than just being named a captain. And it's his work ethic. Uh, he was a, a good leader in that regard. He was a good leader in patting his teammates on the back when they were down. He, he was a good leader in showing them what they needed to do to be successful. And he was all the time trying to keep turmoil away. He wouldn't even talk to a lot of the reporters because he knew that they were trying to dig up some kind of dirt and, and make their team look bad. But that's the kind of leader Derek Jeter was. With the San Francisco Giants, uh, I was fortunate to have Willie McCovey. And the years that McCovey was there with the Giants, he, he was a great leader. Uh, we may go into a three or four, five game losing streak. He would call the home team together and we would talk and try to get things corrected. And, and, but he was good at that. He was very good at that. And then when McCovey left, we had Joe Morgan came in. And Joe had about 15 years of experience. And, but both of them, uh, McCovey and, and Morgan, their work ethic, was something to behold because they were there early every day and they were usually the last ones to leave the clubhouse after the game was over and sit around and talk about the game, what we did right, what we did wrong, and, and just talk baseball. But they were leaders and when they were leading and doing the things that they were supposed to do, our team played better because we were all on the same page. We were all thinking the same thing about how we could win the ball game. If we look at Abraham, uh, Abraham was willing to follow God no matter what. And I can't in fathom hardly God asking me to sacrifice one of my daughters. But God asked Abraham to sac sacrifice his son Isaac. And because God said it, Abraham was willing to do it. Now, do we follow God's word to that degree? We look at Moses. Moses led Israel out of Egypt. He went through a whole lot of problems and he even had to wander around in the wilderness for an extra 40 years because of the sins that uh, the Israelites committed when they made that golden calf. But yet Moses was a leader. He eventually got them where they needed to go. He didn't get to go himself, but he got them over. He got to go up and step on a mountain and look over and see what the promised land looked like. But he was a leader. We look at Josiah. Now, for all you young people out there, Josiah became a king when he was eight years old. And when he was 18, he saw that they weren't following God's word the correct way. And he tore his clothes. And he told them to read the book to all the people. And that book was the word of God. And he got the people back on the right track. And he wasn't very old at all. Matter of fact, he, again, he was eight years old when he became king, but he was 18 years old when he got the people back on the right track. So you can be young, but yet you can still be a leader. If we look at the Apostle Paul, he had to make a change in religion. He went from being a Jew to being a Christian. And that had to be very hard for him to do because I'm sure he got some flack from his family. Because at one time he was imprisoning Christians, he was killing Christians, he even stood there and took care of some people's clothing while Stephen was being stoned. And, but yet he became one of the greatest leaders in the New Testament that we have. And he wrote most of the New Testament himself. Then we look at Peter, the Apostle Peter. He boldly stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached the very first gospel sermon that was ever preached. And yet I think he enjoyed that to be able to tell the people what they needed to do for the very first time to ever be saved, to obey the gospel plan of salvation. And then one of my favorites is Barnabas. Barnabas wanted to help in any way that he could. He was a helper. He was a mender. He was able to uh, help people do whatever work or any situation that he was, he was going to do that. And we all need to be a Barnabas. 
But what can leadership do? Can it promote unity? And you know, I believe that it can because if we look at Psalms chapter 133 and verse 1, it says that unity is, is, is good and is pleasant. When we're all of the same mind, the same body, and thinking the same thing, especially in baseball, but even more so in Christianity, things are so much more pleasant when we can look at God's Word and understand what he says and apply it to our lives. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, it says we're to speak the same things and there's not supposed to be any divisions among us. If there wasn't any divisions among us, think what we could do. You know, I know that the apostles, the 12 apostles, turned the world upside down. But we can do it again today. If we have the leadership that's supposed to be out there and teach the truth the way it's supposed to be taught, we can again turn this world upside down and there wouldn't be any divisions among us. Do we have examples of unity? In Acts chapter 4 and verse 32, it says the Christians were of one heart and one soul. Oh man, that, wouldn't that be awesome if everybody was of one heart and one soul and we all apply God to our lives the way He wants us to? Not the way we want to, but the way He wants us to. And if we look at Acts chapter 2 and verses 44 through 46, it tells us that they had all things in common. Now, what does that mean? That means that they were worshiping God together the way that, they, that God wanted them to do. But yet they were helping each other. They were going from house to house. They were fellowshipping with one another. They were sharing meals with one another. But yet they were preaching the same thing. There wasn't any false doctrine being taught. They were all trying to preach what God wanted them to preach. But that's where good leadership comes. And that's why we need good leadership today. Christians are supposed to be leaders of Christ. And if we are leaders of Jesus Christ, think how many people that we can bring to Him. It's an awesome thought, isn't it? I mean an awesome thought. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.